Alrighty y'all, welcome back to the shop. I wanted to say that I really appreciated all of the comments and feedback on the first video of this series. Know that I always make sure to put eyes on everyone in the comments made on my videos, and I love seeing when these videos create value for you, the viewers. I was also very happy to see in the comment section the interest in Kyle's course that the first video of this series was able to generate. I'm not affiliated in any way with Mr. Kyle Royer, however, I am a huge fan of his work and would love to see his business succeed. At this point, after going through all of his course footage, I can vouch for the product. Like I mentioned in the first video, everyone eventually lands on methods that work the best for them. While I won't adapt every method used by Kyle, there are many golden nuggets in this course that will for sure be integrated into my hidden tang workflow. I feel like over the years a knife maker learns from other makers, as well as their own experiences via experimentation to land on their standard operating procedure for knife construction. I'm obviously in these stages of my journey, and I gotta say, it's a lot of fun. So with that, let's get to the build. As y'all have just seen, I milled a slot into my stainless steel guard, and I'm currently filing the corner square so that the guard fits up tight onto my shoulders. Once the guard contacts the shoulders, I can use the outline left behind on the guard to show where I need to remove material for a Royer guard fit. As shown in detail on his YouTube channel, Kyle removes material from this area on his guard in order to fit the guard over the ricasso. So stated another way, the ricasso is inserted into the guard. To remove the bulk of the material, I used a small end mill on my 3990 mini mill. I then unpackaged my new high-speed rotary tool that I found on Amazon for under 40 bucks. This tool turns up to 56,000 RPMs, which isn't quite as fast as Kyle's dental burr, but seems to do a pretty good job for the budget conscious, non-professional like myself. When purchasing this rotary tool, I also ordered a set of smaller collets and a carbide burr. There is a slight amount of runout on this kit, but I found it to be manageable. On my first guard attempt here, I used this rotary tool and a carbide burr in conjunction with the optivizer. I would remove material, coat with a sharpie, hammer onto the ricasso, and repeat until the guard was fitted up onto the ricasso. Note that I said first guard attempt. That's because I am far from having the skills of Mr. Royer and new to this guard fitting technique. After getting the guard fit up onto my ricasso, I noticed some gapping along the top and bottom of the guard. This gapping caused me to pitch this guard and start over. I employed the same process on guard number two, trying to be more thoughtful and careful. All right, so this is where we're at with guard fit number two. We failed on guard fit number one. I had gaps on the top and bottom as y'all saw. And now we have the same process being used for guard fit number two with slightly better results. You can see on the top of the guard here, I have a pretty darn good fit, and I have a good fit along the sides of the guard. Where the issue arises is at the bottom, I have the same problem I had on the first guard fit. I have a slight amount of gapping right at the bottom of the ricasso. So this is obviously not acceptable, and I'll be doing a third guard fit on this knife. Now, a couple things to note here is that I think part of the issue with this guard fit is my tang. So let me get it off real fast. As I mentioned earlier, I actually reduced a little bit more than I would like on the shoulders of my ricasso here, where the tang meets the ricasso, and this is requiring me to fit a larger portion of the ricasso to the guard. Also, I back cut this ricasso, and after taking a harder look at the back cut, it doesn't really seem like the line is terribly straight, even though I use my mill to do this, so I may need to refine that process in the future. I've seen videos of Royer using a file guide and lightly touching the file guide with his carbide end mill to get this back cut nice and straight, so I think that's probably why he does that to ensure a, a, straighter, uh, a straighter cut there on the back cutting of the ricasso. The last thing that I'll note here is I actually softened my ricasso before starting the guard fitting process, which was a mistake. You may be able to get away with this on a softer material like bronze or copper or brass. However, with stainless, it seems like I had slight deformation of these corners on my ricasso itself, 
because it's soft and I'm hammering on this guard to it that's made out of stainless. So in the future, I will make sure to keep my Ricasso hardened before starting the guard fitting process. So moving forward to make this slightly easier on myself, considering I have some limitations with the shoulders and the softened Ricasso, I'm going to be switching materials on this guard to copper. So this is the first time I've messed around with copper and we're going to try it out on this knife. I'm going to use the same process of milling in the slot and using the engraving tool to take away little pockets to fit the Ricasso into the guard, but I'm just going to be doing it with copper. So hopefully it's slightly more forgiving and I can get a nice tight guard fit on this knife and move forward. So on to guard fit number three. I get the slot milled with a 3 16 of an inch end mill and square off the corners of the slot with a file. This time around, I decided to up my game with a cheap microscope in order to really see what I'm doing with the rotary burr. This $70 microscope isn't anything to write home about, but it gets the job done in this application with a pretty large focal window and a screen big enough to see what's going on. I mounted mine to an old microphone boom with a pipe clamp. One thing I'll mention quickly here is that I think part of my guard fitting issues on this knife are due to opening up the slot too much with files. This allowed the guard to move up and down when looking at the knife from the side. Even if this movement is very slight, it could lead to unwanted indentations at the top and bottom of the slot when hammering on the guard since it's not going on the exact same way every time. At this point, I had the fit looking pretty good. I have some slight gapping at the top of the guard, which I attempt to close with some targeted peening. The goal here is to slightly move some material back towards the Ricasso. This worked decently and the gap at the top was closed to some degree. So at this point in the build, we have the copper guard fit up over to Ricasso and a stainless front spacer fit to the tang as well. All in all, I'm feeling like I'm good to move on to the next steps. In part three of this build series, I'll be fitting my wood block to the tang, fabricating a pommel and pommel nut, installing lineup pins, and then bedding my handle. If you feel like you're getting something out of this series, please share it with your knife making friends and relentlessly peer pressure them into subscribing to the channel. Also make sure to give me your thoughts in the comment section below. Until the next time, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.